Hi, I'm Keith Garner from Wesley Mission, and I've got with me in an interesting conversation, a three-way conversation on the theme of gambling, three very important people because we've all got a concern about this thing, so we're sharing it with you. We've got Simon, our moderator, who's here to, to share something from a Uniting Church perspective because we're hoping that you're being part of this. I've got Tim Costello, who's down in Melbourne. Uh, Tim is, of course, very involved in the Alliance for Gambling Reform. That's how I've got involved in some of these issues, and it's certainly a, an important voice. So, Tim, I'm going to shoot off with you and ask you what the, ga the Alliance for Gambling Reform is and why it's so important. Thanks, Keith. The Alliance for Gambling Reform came out of the Interchurch Gambling Task Force in Victoria that I and uh, Bronwyn Pike, who was working for the United Church Synod, set up. So uh, the history uh, is over 20 years old. The Alliance is focusing on three things. It's focusing on making Australians aware that we have the greatest gambling losses per head of any nation in the world. Losses 30% higher than the nation that comes second, which is Singapore, then there's the Irish. It's making Australians aware that uh, really the reason for this is we have nearly 20% of all the world's poker machines. You and New South Wales have nearly 10% of all the world's poker machines. And of the gambling losses, um, 24 billion a year, the majority come from pokies. The second thing really is very simple. It's the same, let's get reform. Not prohibition, reform. Reform means uh, shorter hours, not open from 9 a.m. to 5 a.m. As my father taught me, nothing good happens after midnight. I'll tell you, nothing good happens at 3 a.m. in a pokies uh, venue. Uh, getting one dollar bet spins. So instead of being able to load up seven and a half grand in one go, as you can in New South Wales, slow the machines down. They do less damage. And uh, really the third thing and the final thing is it's to actually really stop what I regard as the corruption of politics, both sides of politics, by the gambling money. So much easy money that we don't get reform because both sides of politics are captured by the gambling industry. And it's where Uniting Church parishes come in to raise their voice, to point out uh, this corruption, the crime, the, the domestic violence, the kids going hungry, all that flows from this capture of government. So that's, that's the alliance, Keith. Yeah, look, thanks, Tim. I, I mean, uh, we had a conversation, a three-way conversation, just a matter of a few weeks ago. And Simon, when we had that conversation, the two things, uh, first of all, we get that uh, amazing figure that, that the United Church has been in it right from the very beginning, but that figure that 10% yes. of the world... And so you're in on this, Simon, because you've got a responsibility. So what do you feel about that when you hear that kind of fact? Well... Apart from being overwhelmed by that kind of statistic, which is which is a frightening number, it, it speaks, speaks to me about how we can engage as congregations, because I think it's all well and good for a moderator or a leader of a mission to speak out on these issues, and we should speak out. But it's also about people on the ground in congregations and communities where it's actually happening to be in, involved in advocacy and uh, communication and letter writing and, and confronting local politicians about how important this is. Because in the end, this may well be an important policy issue, and it is, but on the ground is where the change is going to happen, where communities and congregations start saying no to these things and asking for a different way forward. I mean, you've said to me, really, that, that, that you know, this, we, we're obviously people like you and I, we yeah. don't go out on the poker machines. No. We don't understand anything about this. Yeah. So, so throwing back to you, Tim, Simon's really saying, what can local churches do? What can local Uniting Church congregations, how can they get involved? Well, local congregations uh, will discover they have a voice and when they raise their voice that there are so many families in their neighbourhood affected. Uh, as soon as I started raising my voice here 20 years ago in Victoria about this, I was amazed how public opinion swung. Now, any survey in Victoria, 85% of Victorians will say, get rid of all the pokies. They're more prohibitionists than I am. Why? Because they all know someone who's hurt, someone in their family. And uh, your congregations certainly will discover that there are neighbours who are silent because the message is gamble responsibly it blames and silences the individual. You're, indiv you're an uh, irresponsible individual if you've got a problem. Why it's easier to admit you've got a drug problem, a mental illness problem, 
than a gambling problem because you're told you must be the only irresponsible one. So raising your voice, getting to know what's happening in your communities, your parishes will be amazed to know how many people know someone, are affected themselves, what sort of pain and havoc it is causing. We didn't, we, didn't we say, though, that one of the reasons why we should have this conversation is because of the COVID situation that we're now facing, because yeah. we've had lockdown. And I think, Tim, we, we got these $750 payments that were made, and they were good. I mean, I've got, I'm taking nothing away from the government giving money for poor people. But there's another one of those due soon, and our fear is that that money will just go down the machines, Simon. Well, I think you're right, and I think, I think the, the, the concern that I've had, that we talked about last week too, was that issue about personal shame, how much that weighs down in this conversation so that people are ashamed of what's happening and they're made to feel ashamed, and shame isn't going to bring you forward for hope or for, for restoration. It's going to help you to hide away more, and that's going to make the, the, the problem larger. And as you talk, Tim, about the conversation that where it isn't just the appalling gambling problem from the poker machines, it's the associated problems of kids going hungry or domestic violence that happened in the home, and that shame that leads to uh, suicidal thoughts and action and all those added appalling complications that the congregations need to be thinking about as well. How do we provide not just a voice about justice and advocacy, but also a voice of care and dare I say, the, the word forgiveness or life to those who are, whose lives are trapped by this stuff. Look, uh, the danger about all this, and we know something about this at Wesley Mission, yeah. uh, historically, is that we've often been thought of wowsers. Yes. If, we, if we speak up a voice, and there is a danger of people thinking yeah. that this is a big wowser issue, you know, you, yep. you're stopping our funding. Um, the reality is, and, and I'm a bit careful when I say this, if we're serious about this, it will be costly. You know, yeah. because people will not like you raising... The, is that right, Tim, would you say? People people hate you raising this issue, especially those who are involved in the business. Oh, yeah, there's no question that when there's this much easy money to be made, uh, to raise your voice and get in the way of people making huge amounts. You know, CEOs of not-for-profit clubs in your state will be, pay, be on salaries more than the Prime Minister. It's unbelievable what they're paying themselves. Um, sad thing is, uh, though there will be politicians who are captured and uh, the gaming industry, captains of industry who are captured, the truth is most people will actually be on your side. Yeah. I initially found people saying a wowser, the Reverend Tim Costello, then because we just told stories, broke the silence, broke the shame. Simon's absolutely right about that suddenly people are saying this is highly addictive. And unlike a drug problem or an alcohol problem where you actually are physically affected when you drink too much or inject, you can hide a gambling problem. Uh, it's a person dressing up, going to the club, they give her a free uh, coffee, they know her machine. Uh, it is highly insidious. And uh, when you break the silence and people start talking, actually, People will be on your side, but the power brokers, and that may be politicians and captains of industry, yeah, that they will oppose you. And, and you made the point earlier, I think, Tim, too, about the fact that I think it's 12% of the government's revenue in this, in this state comes from gambling and poker machines. So it, it's a drip feed to them in terms of their life, and you're thinking, well, how do you confront and challenge that? And I think part of the role of the church is to avoid the wowser tag by talking about economic injustice, about structural injustice, as well as these critically important issues. I mean, domestic violence is before us all the time. And people talk about how can we address this. Looking at root causes probably helps as well. And this is seriously a root cause of that. I mean, the COVID conversation is a really important conversation. And um, more and more we're discovering that people are... Uh, hiding things more at home because they haven't got to go outside. And so this is compounding the issue. And I think hotels and clubs are reliant upon it and they use false language often about this is where community happens. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a false community if it's about gambling and poker machines. Mm -hmm. What do you think most Uniting Churches would feel about this subject? Lots of them are sharing with our conversation. What do you think that most of the folks there would think? Well, my feeling would be that, by and large, this is one of those almost low-hanging fruit conversations where people go, absolutely, we've got a problem with that. 
I don't mind a flutter on occasionally on the Melbourne Cup Day or whatever, but on the larger issues like, like poker machines, I would think a lot of them wouldn't know the depth of the problem. And Tim, you mentioned to us earlier a few weeks ago about the length of this problem. Since the 1950s, we've been involved in this industry. And I think that, that's, that means it's, it's a cultural conversation for us as well about how we understand this. But I think that your early question before, Keith, that people want to ask is, OK, we've got a problem. We agree it's a problem. What can we do? And I think, like you asked before, what is it that we are able to do that will have an effect? And, and people want to know. I mean, I've worked in rural ministry. We know the nature of these large clubs that everyone flocks to and your people in this darkened room sitting there playing the machines and either feeding large chunks of money through or just simply tapping their card and through it goes. I think the, the business of the wowser and the, 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 yeah. the, the Tim Rick can be corrected, he's, he's quite right. Sure. Our, our business here is not just to say there shouldn't be clubs in Australia. No, no. We're not going to win that kind of debate, but we can enter into the debate and say we don't need as many poker machines, yeah. we don't need them presenting in the way that they are, yep. and probably the key thing that Tim said was reducing the amount of money that can be lost at one go immediately Absolutely. would do something fundamentally straight away. Simple structural change. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay, we've had this conversation. Tim, one thing that you would hope would come out of this conversation, bearing in mind this is going to uniting churches all across the state, which there are hundreds of them, what kind of things would we be saying to those congregations? Uh, firstly, um, pray, because this is a, an addiction that ensnares a whole lot of your neighbours. Secondly, encourage them to break the silence. A whole lot of people are affected, have families affected, and they feel shame. Thirdly, write to your local council. Um, Fairfield Council, uh, one of the poorest in uh, Sydney, has the most concentration of pokies. Fairfield Council is standing up and saying, we're seeing the crime, we're seeing the kids going hungry. Encourage your council. Say, join the Alliance for Gambling Reform. Many Victorian councils have joined the Alliance. Um, and uh, the final thing is then write to your local member and say to the local member, we've got to slow the machines down. Two Productivity Commission reports, two. 1999 and 2007 have said the solution is $1 bet spins, not being able to load up seven and a half grand in one go. Slow them down and then you'll do far less damage and families and our courts that are clogged won't be as clogged with this addiction. Simon, you've got your own people, your moderator yep. of the, yep. the Synod here. What would you be saying to people? Well, I, th I think Tim's advice is really good and I'd be saying to people two things. If, if you're going to be involved in the advocacy and I want to support that 100%, be also prepared that people may well see your congregation as a place to find respite and, recover and recovery. So have some contact in the community about what resources are available for counselling and support and uh, nurture. And so when people come to you uh, ensnared, what can you do? Because people will, will want to know. And I think too, congregations are ideal places. They're places of community. People come looking for community. There'll be community there of, re of recovery and restoration and hope. But I think too, to be talking to the presbyteries and the synod about what resources can be made available about communication because we're making this clear. We have a real concern about this, not as some traditional Methodist history model of concern about gambling. This is a, a crisis for our community right now. It's a social crisis that has other threads to it that are causing crisis. How can we speak into that space constructively and in the longer term? This is not a flash in the pan. This is a longer term plan for us to be involved. And what's been good is that we, we've concluded this conversation with spiritual matters. We've talked yes. about what makes a person a person. And I think at the end of the day, the conversation isn't just about campaigning against an issue or saying don't do this or don't do that, but what makes for real human living? And, and, and I believe that, that all of us in every church, in every congregation can do something about that. This issue of gambling is real and you can do something about it.